Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to explain why I think the DJI Mini 2 is the perfect drone for new flyers and even more experienced pilots that may be flying something else. Now, I've been flying the Mini 2 ever since it was released about six months ago, and it's a drone that comes with me pretty much every time I leave the house. And I'll explain some of the benefits and features of it in a minute, but I have to say, <laughs> I am blown away by the level of technology that DJI was able to cram into this sub 250 gram frame. What they've done is taken a lot of the technology that's available in their more sophisticated drones like the Mavic 2 and the Mavic Air 2S, and shrunk that down into a frame that fits under that 250 gram weight limit. And that's no small feat because a lot of those sophisticated features, even though they're technologically advanced, when you put them in a small drone like this, they're not gonna add weight, but they're gonna drink electrons out of the battery because all that electronics really needs to have power to be able to do things. So to build a drone that's under 250 grams, have it fly for as long as this one does and build in all that sophisticated technology is a real engineering challenge. So good on DJI for doing that. And I remember when the original Mavic Mini was released, that was about 18 months ago. When I first got my hands on that drone, I looked at it and said, this drone looks like a toy. There's no way this thing can fly like a standard DJI drone. And a couple of days after I'd been flying it, I just couldn't get over how stable the drone was. So what you're going to find with this particular product is when you put it up in the air, it's going to stay right where you left it. When you tap the joysticks, it's gonna respond immediately. It's gonna fly far, it's gonna fly long, it's gonna take phenomenal pictures. I'm telling you, it's everything you want in a drone. And I fly pretty much everything that's available out there. If you've watched the channel, you know I'm flying Evos, I'm flying Parrots, I'm flying all the way up through the Inspire series with DJI, right down to the mini series. But <laughs> of all those drones, and I love them all for different reasons, this is hands down one of my favorite drones to fly because it gives me about 80% of what I'm looking for from a drone when I put it up in the air. So I'll get into the specs in a second. Now again, this clip may be sort of uh, going over old turf for people that have been flying for a while and already understand what the Mini 2 is about, but I get a lot of emails from people. I guess the spring is here and everybody's deciding they're gonna get into the hobby. Maybe those checks have shown up from the government and they've got a little extra money and they're like, you know what, now's the time for me to buy a drone. Rick, what drone should I buy? And it's a hard question to answer because it depends on your budget and what you're gonna use the drone for, but Un unwaveringly, this is one that I suggest. Either this or the original Mavic Mini because you're getting so much for the money in this drone when you compare it to other products on the market. Now, I know there are people out there that are gonna say, oh, it doesn't do this and it doesn't do that and you should be buying the Mavic Air 2S or maybe the Mavic 2 Pro. And I get it, those drones are absolutely phenomenal drones for different reasons. But most people that are entering the hobby for the first time have to worry about spending too much money because it's an investment and you're flying it in the air and there's always a chance you're gonna run into something and all of a sudden the $350 you dropped on a drone hits a tree and hits the ground, that's not a good thing. So my recommendation is if you're starting out and you wanna learn how to fly a drone, you can't make a mistake going with this one because it's gonna control, the control is there for you to handle it. It's gonna be great in the air. It's gonna take wonderful pictures and you can learn on this drone and everything you learn on this drone from a joystick perspective and your piloting skills as you get better, all of those are transferable to a larger, more sophisticated drone. So it's a great drone to get started with. And the best part is, I was watching the other day, I was checking some, some sales out there and even the original Mavic Mini on a secondary market is still worth quite a lot of money. So people that bought that drone and flew it for the last 18 months are selling it on some of those secondary markets for pretty close to what they bought it for with all the accessories included and taking that money and reinvesting in this or the brand new Air 2S or maybe even the Evo product. But I guess what I'm getting at is it's an investment that you can sell later to upgrade to something else. All right, so some of the specs around this product and what makes it so amazing. The things you care about when you're buying a drone are things like how far can it fly? How long can it fly? What kind of pictures can it take? What kind of technology is built into it with extra features and functions? So initially when this drone came out, again, I can't get over it. The Mini 2 can fly 10 kilometers. Now that's based on an OcuSync 2 transmission technology. Most of the other drones on the market use a standard vanilla Wi-Fi, which means you're connecting through Wi-Fi from the drone to the controller. And that kind of limits how far you can go. OcuSync 2 technology, is based on Wi-Fi. It's the same carrier frequency, two, four, and five, eight, but it's got this frequency hopping technology where there's brains built into the controller and brains built into the drone. And when they first power up, they pair up 
and they stay locked forever. So the drone and the controller are talking to each other the entire time they're flying. And what makes OcuSync technology so amazing is that the controller is constantly looking for the strongest signal, and that's what they lock on initially, somewhere in that Wi-Fi band. But then it's also looking for the next powerful signal. So if something comes up and there's interference in the particular frequency it's picked on, it's going to move to the next strongest frequency. So there's constantly a conversation going on between these two guys to make sure that that telemetry information in your control signals are locked in rock solid. They're never going to waver. So the drone isn't going to get lost on its own. The controller is going to take control and be able to fly this thing safely. So it'll fly 10 kilometers. Now, again, I caution you, we have a visual line of sight requirement in the U.S. You really can't fly further than you keep an eye on the drone. And for me, I'm getting a little bit older, even with glasses and a beacon on it. If I get about 2,000 feet out, that's about as far as I can fly. And I know people love to fly these things miles away, but you're taking a real risk there because you're flying beyond visual line of sight, which isn't really a good thing to do. The reason that signal strength is important is because even when it's in close, there's a lot of noise in that Wi-Fi band. You've got microwave ovens, you've got Wi-Fi points of presence, you've got all kinds of Bluetooth gear in there. So there's a lot of noise and chatter in that band. Having a really strong signal means you're not going to fly at six miles, but flying in close, you've got a really strong signal to make sure you're never going to have issues with losing the quad. How long can it fly? 31 minutes, which again is amazing because as an engineer, packing the technology into this box, I've got to make this sort of Faustian bargain between how much power can I put in there and what's drinking that power? How big can the battery be? How much can it weigh to keep it under 250 grams and still give me enough power to fly the drone? to communicate back to the controller, to handle all the sophistication built into the drone from a technology perspective, GPS coordination, all kinds of stability controls, streaming video back to the controller, all of that is drinking electrons out of the battery. So you would think, well, just put a bigger battery in it. Well, I can't because I'm under 250 grams. And even if I could put a bigger battery in it, it's a heavier battery, which means a heavier battery is going to draw more power to keep it in the air. So there's this balancing act between energy density of the battery, and how long and how far the drone can fly. So 31 minutes means the engineers put a battery in there that's the right size, but then worked on all the electronics to make all those sophisticated systems extremely efficient, to drink as little as possible from that battery to keep it near 31 minutes. So that blew me away, 31 minutes of flight time is phenomenal for this drone. The other thing that's cool about it is with the original Mavic Mini, they did a great job with it, but it wasn't terribly good in strong winds. So if you're going to fly near the beach, or you're going to fly in an area that's got high winds up near the mountains. The original Mavic Mini, in some ways, would fight the winds for a while, but eventually it would give up and just be a slave to the wind. This one, I'm telling you, I've had it up in the air in incredibly strong winds, and it just sits there and fights that wind. It's incredibly good and stable in the air. Matter of fact, I think it's a Category 5. It's a load 5 wind factor, which is uh, 10 meters per second or greater, which you should shouldn't be flying in that strong a wind with this small a drone, but it's good to know that if you get out there and you're flying over the bay or something and all of a sudden the wind kicks up, it'll make its way back home safely. So it's strong in the wind. As far as imaging goes, um, again, a drone like this shouldn't be able to shoot this kind of video and great pictures, but it's 4K at 30 frames a second, which is plenty fine for any video you want to take and share on social media and send to friends or even render. Now, I know a lot of people make big noise about, it's got to be 4K, hey, 8K's out, what about 6K, 5.4K? All of those resolutions are great, and they're perfect for certain situations, but again, 1080p is the content resolution that I use for most of my videos, and when I share it with clients or I share it with friends, I'm rendering a 1080p because 4K is better. It's higher resolution, you're going to get more detail in there, but it's a pain in the neck to render. You've got to have a really powerful computer, the files are gigantic, so with a memory card you can't fit as many on there, and if you can shoot 4K at 30 frames a second, I think it's a compromise that is pretty good. You'll find that if you shoot in 4K, you may save those files and render them, but more often than not, you're going to shoot at 1080p anyway, so this camera is fantastic for that. They've also redesigned the controller. So this is the Gen 2 controller, which I think they did a great job on this. So it's it's really nice in your hands. It fits in there really well. The joysticks fall into your thumbs. All the controls are easy to understand. You got to pop out here to put your phone in or your tablet in. They even include the cable behind it, so it's really easy to set it up. It's just a wonderful controller. And the best part is you can actually use the internal batteries on this when you connect it up to your phone or your tablet to keep your phone or your tablet charged. So the software has done a lot to sort of improve that. All right, in addition to that, the drone itself is just brilliant from a control perspective, and I can't say that enough. What you get with this drone, unlike a lot of other drones in this price category, is when you put this drone in the air, because of the GPS coordination, the VIO facing down, which is the stabilization technology, and all of the whiz-bang features in their gyros keep this thing right where you left it. So if you're flying this along and all of a sudden you get scared because you're getting near a tree or you're getting too far away and you don't know where it is, take your thumbs off the joystick. The drone will stay exactly where you left it. It's not going to move on you. Whereas a lot of other drones that I fly in this price range 
have a ton of drift and you've got to adjust for that drift. So if I put it out there a thousand feet in the field, I don't want to take my thumbs off the joystick and have this thing start drifting towards a tree. With this one, it stays right where you put it. And I'm telling you, the first time you put this thing up and send it 10 feet away from you in the backyard and take your thumbs off the joystick and it stays where you left it, it's going to blow you away. It's going to blow your mind because it's like, it, it's so smart that it's going to stay exactly where you left it. And that's the technology inside the drone that's controlling that. I think that's absolutely brilliant. In addition to that, the batteries in this are incredibly easy to charge. So they give you, if you buy the Flymore combination, by the way, this is sold in two versions, the basic version, which comes with the drone, a battery, the controller, and a few accessories or the Flymore combo. I always recommend going with the Flymore combination because what you're going to get here is extra batteries, this beautiful charging hub, extra propellers, and a couple of other cool features. Um, but you get the extra batteries with it, which is a huge savings in, in money because I guarantee you when you put this thing up, you're going to want to fly it more than 31 minutes and you're going to buy extra batteries. You're going to be looking for a way to charge those extra batteries. So the hub gives you the ability with the two extra batteries to charge everything in the hub. DJI thought of everything because they've made the drone high performance charging, which means it's PD charging. You can use one of the newer PD chargers, connect it up through a USB-C connection on the back of the drone. It'll quick charge the batteries in the drone. Now, I'm not a big fan of charging batteries in the drone. I like charging them externally. So having this battery hub that I can three, fit three batteries in, plug it into a USB-C connection on a PD charger, it's gonna quick charge these batteries. Now, it doesn't charge them all at the same time. Even though you can leave them all in there, it'll charge whichever battery needs the least amount of charge first, and then move on to the next one, then move on to the third one. So it'll actually march its way through your batteries to make sure they're only charged. And what's interesting about that is a lot of people ask me, well, why didn't it charge the one that needed the deepest charge first? And that's simple because when you're charging the batteries, you want to get back outside and fly as quickly as possible. So charging the one that needs the least amount of charge makes sense because that way you can pull it out, go start flying while the other batteries are charging. The other thing they did, again, I'm talking about the prowess here of the engineering team at DJI, is when they built this, they said, you know what, that's a great little hub because it protects the batteries when I'm traveling. It also allows me to charge them. But in addition to that, it's got a USB-A connection on the side, which means I can take a cable from here to the controller, connect the USB-C up to a charger. It'll walk through the batteries, charge those, and charge the controller. So one USB-C connection allows me to charge everything I need to get out the door and start flying. In addition to which, if you have batteries after you've been flying for a while that still have some voltage left in them, or I should say capacity left in them, if you slide them back in the charging hub, you can turn it on and you can connect up any device to this and this turns into a battery bank. So again, if I'm in that lab thinking about how I'm going to build a product and how I'm going to amaze customers, okay, it's a charging hub. That's great. We've got a lot of charging hubs for different drones, but the fact that they took a charging hub and turned it into a battery bank with the residual power still left in the batteries means that they're thinking through the customer experience of what you're buying and how you're going to use the product. I think that's just a great thing. And more than once, I've used that in the field to charge my phone because the phone's getting a little low and I'm driving home. I can plug that in in the field and charge my phone and make the calls or connect to the internet, whatever I have to do. So they're thinking of everything. So in general, what you're getting here, again, for less than 500, I think this whole kit today in the four, somewhere in that price range, um, is, is a phenomenal value. I, you're getting the drone, you're getting a beautiful controller. If you buy the basic package, you're getting a single battery. You can buy extra accessories for it later on. My recommendation, again, is always go with the Fly More because it gives you a whole lot more stuff. But when you compare this to other drones on the market, Nothing really comes close in my opinion. And again, I'm flying this thing every day and I just love it. I have it up in the air. Every day there's sun shining outside. I've got this guy out with me and I'm flying it, taking beautiful videos and wonderful pictures. And it's just a fantastic drone. Now, if this is a drone that you're looking at today and you're thinking, well, what's the next big step up? I like this one, but I need more sophisticated features. I want a better camera that shoots 4K 60. Maybe I want crash avoidance built into it. That's where you'd move up to the Air 2S. Now this is the Air 2S. Side by side, these two drones are pretty close in size, but what you have to remember is, it is, it's actually larger by a lot when you hold them up like this. That's the Air 2S. Now, to me, they're both portable, but to me, this one, I almost forget I have it with me. Whereas this one, I gotta think about it a little bit because the controller's the same size, but the batteries are bigger, the charger's a little bigger. So with this one, the beauty of having a small drone like this that does pretty much everything the 2S does except for the resolution and all the other whiz bag stuff is you get the drone with you more often. So when I leave the house, I'm not even thinking about bringing this with me because this and the controller take up about as much room as a ham sandwich. So I've got this with me every time. This one I gotta think about. I'm like, ah, bring the drone, I don't know, bring the drone. This one, it just comes with me. So what you're gonna find is, going with a smaller drone like this, 
means you're gonna get more shots. It's gonna be with you more often. When you happen to cross that field where the sun is setting, it's a perfect golden hour in the afternoon, and you're like, man, I wish I had my drone with me. Look at those horses out there on the horizon. You'll have your drone with you because it's small enough. But if you need one that's got crash avoidance and a larger sensor and all kinds of, again, whiz-bang features where it's gonna chase you, it's gonna fly around you, this is the guy to go with. There are features built into this that'll do autonomous flight as well. I'm gonna spend some time this week putting together clips that I'm gonna call Mini 2 Basics that go through all the things you're gonna to need to know as a new flyer using this drone. So watch for those. I'm putting a whole series of those together to tell you how to change the props, how to care for your batteries, how to use some of those uh, automated features where it's gonna fly around you, all the things you really care about. But that was pretty much it for today. So I hope you found this helpful. And again, I love putting these kind of clips together and I must have had I must have had 60 or 70 emails over the last week or two asking me, hey Rick, it's springtime, I got a little extra cash, I'm looking to buy a drone, which one would you recommend? Without fail, this is the drone I start with. And then I ask, what else are you gonna do with it? If you're gonna fly commercially, maybe a bigger drone makes sense, but honestly, for 80% of the flying you're gonna do, the Mini 2 is the perfect drone. So I hope this was helpful. By the way, if you need accessories for this drone or anything else, we sell a lot of those on our website. I talk about it all the time. We're flyers just like you. So I spend a lot of time in the air with all the drones out there. And when we find an accessory we like, we'll bring it in and put it up on the website. So if you wanna support the channel, hit the website and pick up those, those units. Um, if you have any questions about this or anything else we talk about on the channel, please drop those in the comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. I've been a little bit slow to respond to comments lately because I've been a little under the weather, but I'm feeling better and I'm back. So start looking for a lot more clips coming from me anyway. So thanks again for watching and until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.